Well, I finished with the shadows in the sand, but as in doing that, I noticed a few things I have to change. If you ever find a shape that looks like something else in your painting that you don't didn't intend it to be, we're going to change it. And I did see that when I had a chance. Uh, the foreground brush stuff here reminded me of a man laying down, <laughs> down so I'm going to change that. And the other thing I noticed is that I needed to push back the distant hills. They seem to be the same value or close in value as to the foreground shadows. So I'm going to lighten that up. These are things you check as you're working on the painting. And if they need correct it, uh, you need to do that. If it's not right, change it. So I'm going to do that first before I go into the sky and the water. If someone sees something in your painting and point you, points it out to you that it looks like something else, that's all you're going to see from then on. So it's good to change it. Let's make this... Oh, I don't want to lose it. While I'm doing this, let me add some of the flowers so that I can be pretty much done with this area. There are some pink and some yellow flowers there, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to add some of the lighter greens that I had before and then put in some of the, the little flowers. lost some of my darks. I'll reestablish those. I'm going to get a smaller brush now for the flowers. I have a small round little detail brush. It's a, I think it's a synthetic sable. I use this only for very fine detail and for my signature. Let's put the pink ones in first. A little permanent rose and some titanium white. And we don't want to put every flower in, but we'll suggest them. And again, vary the, the rhythm of them, the pattern. We don't want them all in a straight line. Since the paint is so wet, I'm having to go thicker, more buttery. If I didn't want to do that, it didn't work, then I would have to wait for this to dry. We're just suggesting. The observer will put it all together in their own eyes. You don't need to give them every little bit of information. Okay, I'm going to put some yellow flowers in now. Give some white and some cadmium yellow medium. Get it on there pretty thick. That's a little bit too light. We'll intermingle some of these up here. Do that. Maybe not too much there. Okay. To get some of that green and the same brush, and now I'm doing just a little bit of some grasses. More detail is shown in the foreground because it is closer. I'm going to go up and take care of pushing back the distant 
uphill here, so I won't use this little brush anymore. I'll go back to the one I was using before. I still have that color on my palette. Just cool it up a little bit, make it a little bit lighter. Let's see if we can't take this further back. A little bit lighter. A little bit of this yellow. Gray it down. I think that took it back a little bit further than what it was. I'm going to go over the, uh, the water and put the rock in the water. Take some of that purple color that I was using and blend it in so it's not quite all the same. Same yellow all the way through. cadmium red to that. Gives the water a little bit of movement. Still trying to keep things very simple. I have a motto that says less is best. Some people say less is more. I say less is best. Keep simplifying. Keep and just keep it as simple as you can. It brings about a stronger painting. Trying to make an interesting shape, but keep it simple. And I want to make the edge a little bit darker as it goes into the water. The top edge might be catching some of the sun. Let's put one back here instead. And then the front. I'm going to go over the sky just a little bit, maybe suggest a cloud coming in. And some of this yellow and white and a little bit of cadmium, red medium. You have a little more interest to the sky without taking too much attention away from everything else. And then where the sun is, it's a little bit hotter. Some more yellow. Blend that in nicely. Soften it since it is behind the hill. A little touch of that on the rocks maybe. Maybe catching some light. Oh, I need to bring that sky down just a little bit more. I noticed here I forgot about that. When you're out in nature, take time to observe. Look at how things are shaped the texture of them, and just spend time observing. I find my students, when they're first starting classes, they come back and say, oh, you should have seen the sky I saw, or the tree I saw. All of a sudden, they're learning to see in a different way. So take time to observe. Take mental notes. It'll help you down the road.
I'm going to finish some of the sky holes up that are there. And then we're just going to go over the green area just a little bit more and put some detail in. And we'll, we'll be close, closer. I think one artist friend of mine used to say, I've never been closer to being done than I am right now. Okay. Now I'm going to go over the green part again, bring out a little more detail, so I'm going to need to go to a little bit smaller brush for that. I think I'll use this Filbert Sable, it's a red sable. I have to go over some of the parts that blended in with the sky to bring them out a little bit more in the ends of the branches. Try not to overdo it. I'm going to go in and finish up some of the other parts of the green and blend it into the sand and a few little touches and I'll be done. So let's get to it. These are mostly just getting into the edges that have been painted over, so it's just doing some final little, um, putting some of the green back into the sand and vice versa. Right now I'm just going to do some of the green just so it's setting down in there with a few details. And again, just bring out some of the trees, trunks a little bit, suggesting there is some behind all this, like that. And one other thing, I noticed that the, this spot right here is a little too bright and I'm going to just tone that down a little bit. There. And then over here I see these are final tiny little things that I see. Is I get these weeds that are growing up here or shrubs that are coming into the water. Just give them a few little bit a little bit of some more little edges coming up to make them just a little more believable. Here. At some point, you have to stop. And I always say, or people ask, well, how do you know when you're done with the painting? Well, that's when you've put everything in that you intended to put in, and you don't need to add anything else. So. If it's everything I intended it to be and how I visioned it from the very beginning, then I call it done. So I think that in this case, that's where I'm going to stop.
Don't be afraid to learn as much about art as you can. Remember, mistakes are a part of being human. Profit and learn from them. Work only as fast as you can and still be accurate. You'll get faster with more experience. Have confidence in yourself and it'll reflect in your paintings. And lastly, painting should come from within and what you believe in. And above all, never give up. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.